I've got something really great to show you today. This is a solo role playing game of map making and discovery by Brandon Lee. It is called Cartograph and it is published by the Ravens Ridge Press. I will put the link to the uh, edition of that I have here as well as a way to get a digital edition below. Let's read the back and then I'll get into exactly what this is. The back of the book says, you have your parchment, you have your sextant, a new land stretches before you. All there is to do is discover it. Cartograph is a tabletop role-playing game about exploring a new world and creating a detailed map along the way. I will say that it is solo. It doesn't say solo here. It's solo. I suppose you could play it cooperatively. This is a GM-less game, so it is not a traditional tabletop role-playing game. By the end of the game, you will have a brand new map ripe with cities, citizens, and history, perfect to use in other fantasy tabletop role-playing games. And I would say that is an accurate description of it because this is my map here. We're going to get into a little bit about what I've been doing and what the rules are to create this world, but it absolutely is a way of generating a map with some story behind it that you could bring into another game, either by putting your PC and NPCs in one place in it or using the history that you develop in this kind of journaling drawing game to inform another session. But even on its own, even if you don't do that, it's a load of fun. And you can look here at the credits, including the uh, link to the artist's designer's other work here. And as I said, you can go down below to see how to get this game. And we'll start off by looking through, we're just going to look through the book here and I'll discuss a little bit about what I've been doing and my thoughts about it. In essence, what you are doing is you are creating a map, you're filling out the details as you play, you're using a, a standard deck of cards for some of the prompts and you'll go through them. You go through the deck pretty slowly actually because you will use a card for multiple things. You need a pencil and an eraser, a paper to draw your map. It is a, there's a journaling component to it because you'll see that the things that you get on the tables, a lot of them are prompts or questions that you can ask. So for example, you may be told that your journey is a dangerous one. Why is it dangerous? What has happened? Or you may be told that you discover a town that is selling uh, particularly precious produce for the area. What are they selling? Why is it precious? And so those are the prompts that you would use to start to create your own story. You are playing a character and your character is a cartographer. There is a random table here that will give you a very basic prompt for your disposition and your value. So my cartographer that I was playing in this game, I just did this randomly. You could also choose it. So my part cartographer had the disposition of jovial and the, the value was honor. That was the value and that was just a random roll. And you are instructed to remember that your journal that you are creating, the history, the story, should be written from your cartographer's perspective. So you could choose or roll randomly on that table, and that is really all the prompt you get for this. I found as I am beginning to play the game and flesh out this world, you can sort of just see visually, I've spent more time in this area, I've yet to explore or develop down here, that I wanted more of a backstory for my cartographer than I found in this particular book. So I'm going to go elsewhere to some other random tables I have to kind of flesh that out and, and connect it to my story. So you don't need to go to other tables. You could just develop that on your own, but I like to use the random tables when I'm playing. There is, so you have your cartographer and then it, the resources in the game, everything is pretty much abstracted. So you have things like coin, food, 
wares, things that you could trade, and you could develop those into being whatever you want that is relevant. So in my particular world that I'm developing here, there is a, I began at this place that was called the North Point, and I decided that there was going to be some lighthouse, or this is going to be the the center of attention in the world, that it is all designed to protect and warn warn people away from something that is in this great forest and perhaps other mysteries and things that are to the the south here and the southwest here there is a lake with some monsters in it so the first prompt that i had initially was that this north point was a place of trade and a place where precious things were uh, produced and found and that they are the best in the world at this thing. And I needed to, I just left that abstract initially, but then as I developed other places and I discovered a place, a town called Greyguard, I began to think that it was protecting this great forest here and perhaps the lake so that there is a sense here that the natural world is magical in some way and being protected from encroaching civilization. But those things like the wares and the coin that you have are kind of all abstracted as is food and items. Now there is an item table that you can draw a roll on to choose a random item. And we'll just take a quick look at that table here. But you could see, so you're, you're in this case, you'd be pulling in a card and you would find a book on local customs. And this, this would have a benefit, which would give you an extra die to roll when you're conversing with an NPC. And there is a mechanism to interact with NPCs. And if you have more dice to roll, you can have more options. But you could see that even the item, the book on local customs, you would have to determine and flesh that out and give the details of that on your own to fit the story that you are developing. Because as, as I said, this is a, a mixture of a, a map making and really a journaling game where the map that you're creating and the prompts, the, the cartographic prompts that you get are designed to help you flesh out a story. So those are the the resources that you are managing and things that will happen in the game occur when you go to various places and you, you're you not rolling on a table, but you're pulling in a card for a prompt. So for example, if you were in a town and you pulled in this king, it says, you are welcomed into this town and revered by the people as some kind of mystical god. What do the people believe about you? How do you respond? And then you will see in bold that you will get some mechanical benefits. So in this case, you're going to be able to get a random item from that table we just saw, or you could choose to get three more biome dice to roll. Now the, the dice that you're rolling are of one of two sorts and the types they are are landmarks or biomes and you will decide at the beginning of the game what color dice is what and you also have a third color dice die which is temporary dice which could be assigned either to a landmark or a biome and to create the map you essentially roll dice and you place the uh, the biomes or the landmarks where the dice land and then you refer to this random table here to do your exploration. And it will tell you that, for example, if you your landmark die was a three, as I had at the outset, then you have discovered a town. And then you could go to the table in the back to name your town. And then there are events, a town event table that you can roll on to see what happens in your town. Or, for example, if your biome die was three, then you would have discovered a mountain. And as I did down here, actually, with one of my rolls, it wasn't a mountain range, it was just a mountain. I haven't really fleshed this mountain out yet because I haven't traveled there yet. So you are located on your map and you are traveling around your map, but you will be doing exploration along the way to kind of discover areas that you may travel to, like I have open land here that's sort of undiscovered. 
this mountain, there's a teeny lake here, and then there's a bigger lake here into which I placed some monsters, and there's even this teeny lake here I see. I forgot about that one. Haven't gotten there yet. Journeying is, again, abstracted by the suit of a card that you would pull in. So if I was journeying and I pulled in a spades, it would say my travel was slowed by an outside force. What was the cause of the delay? The mechanical impact is that I would lose a food, but I would need then to journal in my notebook about what it was that slowed me down. Well, how does the game end? Well, you can decide how the game ends or you can follow the suggestions here. So it could end where you must take a wound and you have no slots to do that. You only have three wound slots and there is a healing mechanism. You can make choices during the course of the game to heal. If you draw the third joker of the same color out of your card deck, the game would end, or if you run out of dice to roll. And there are mechanics in the game that will either give you or take away dice. So there's the die management aspect of it too. If you can, you can also decide that if you name or explore to 10 different places on your map, as well as making a complete coastline, you could see here, I'm not I don't have a complete coastline yet. I've got this kind of inlet. I haven't figured out, is this going to be the ocean or there's going to be a river here? I don't know, but you can see I just have the partial coastline. So if you have a complete coastline, you could decide that the, the game would end there. And of course, there's flexibility. So if you want to change the number of locations, you could make the game shorter or longer. And then the method of play is, let's see, we covered the the definition, so the dice pool are the things that you have to roll. You start with a certain number, and then as the game goes and as you have interactions, you will gain or lose dice. Settlements, we talked about you can encounter people, and when you encounter people, there is a random table here to roll on with 3d6 to get their, their traits, a descriptor, and a focus. So again, pretty abstract, but once you have a story going, you can actually you can get somewhere with that. So in this particular case, I would be in my story and I rolled an 11. So I came upon a religious group of people. I could just leave it at that, or I could roll on a descriptor or a focus. And let's say I'm, I'm interested in the focus here. So their focus in this case is their farmers. So they're religious and they're farmers. So in perhaps the story that I'm developing here, where the power of this world is being threatened by, the power of this natural world is being threatened by, for lack of a better word, industrialization or technology or dark magic in some way. If I came across religious farmers, perhaps these would be the people like the Druids maybe are the most religious people here and they have a connection to magic and the natural magic and maybe they live in the great forest. Again, it's up to you, and that's part of the game, to use this development of the map to create your story. And I think one of the reasons why I like this, I'm so drawn to this particular game, is because philosophically, as I play solo RPG, and if you've watched my channel and you read my book, I have a uh, predisposition to using the environment first to help me locate my characters and direct the story. And that's really what this is doing explicitly. It's not taking you into a further development of your PC, but it, it is giving you the prompts to do that. And I think it does it very effectively. So what is the, the, the cycle of play or the sequence of play? You would be rolling your dice pool directly on the map and it says try to roll them close together. You know, you could use any size. I mean, this is effectively what I did when I had my first points. I think it was I first rolled this and um, three lakes was what I ended up with. These um, two lakes here and um, a settlement. You make your coastline as you can, partially or fully. If you create a little island, then that's full. If you want to make a larger coast, you don't. And then you consult the exploration table, as I already showed you, deter to determine what um, you have gotten here. And then from that, you would then go on to draw the card for the journey to determine 
whether something happened in your journey and what the mechanical impact it was. And then finally, you consult the location tables that are in the back here for if you're in a town, what the prompt is, a city, if you've discovered something, forest, mountain, lake, open land, and then we have some things in the back, like I showed you the people table. There are There's a settlement name table to help you out and then a rules reference. I'm not gonna show you too much what the prompts are because part of the fun of this is discovering them on your own. But since I have open land here and I haven't been there yet, we'll just draw in a card and I got an ace. And so my open land prompt is that strange geometrical structures dot the surrounds. What purpose might they serve? Mark and name a discovery at this location. So you could then answer that question and in line with my story here, perhaps what's happening is that the whoever is opposing us, the, the technocrats or whatever that are opposing and threatening the druids here are putting down, maybe they're putting down drone areas to come in and take over, or maybe they are just establishing their own settlements to threaten us. And perhaps this waterway now is going to become a place of contention. Perhaps this outpost here, this essentially it was a lighthouse that I drew, not from here, just because it sort of made sense to me. Perhaps something significant is going to happen around this lighthouse that I would then create a story about. Again, just using this as a prompt for that based on the story that I'm developing here. You could also then roll on the discovery table as we mentioned. So there's a discovery prompt here. You could pull in a card. And in this case, we have a legendary lair of some deadly creature. What common folklore tale is told about this creature and what makes it so powerful? In this case, the mechanical impact is we're gonna gain a wound and five coin. Oh, that's pretty good. So maybe we fought this creature and it had some money. Coin is great because when you're in a settlement, you can actually, there's items that you can purchase and there is a table to roll on what you can do in settlements and you can take settlement actions and we'll just look at that. So the settlement actions are you could speak to somebody and you could sleep and get gain a biome die. You could also lose a food to get an additional biome die that is, you know, abstract and you're resting to get ready to explore more so it makes sense you could heal where you have to basically go to a healer pay a coin and remove a wound this is an important thing to do because once you get your third wound the game is over you can restock by gaining either food or wear something to trade or you can sell and selling is kind of interesting because what you do is you will um get the, there's a value that is established by a die roll, that random value to see how valuable your wares are and you get a value for that. And then it will determine how much money you get for the things that you have. So it's not a static number. And that makes sense as you're traveling around, you go to some places, things are more valuable or less, or you can shop. And to shop, what you do is you're gonna draw three cards from your deck and you, if you're at a city, you get to draw four, and then you consult the item table um, that we've already seen to see what's available, and then you roll a die to reveal its price, and you have a reputation that is going to impact the price, and so things may be higher or lower if depending on your reputation, and then you can make a purchase if you have enough money, and again, we'll look here. You could get camping equipment or this book on local customs or even a rare artifact that's quite expensive. So the game does a lot with a little, uh, with an abstracted number of things that you can manipulate in the world, like your reputation, like your money, like your health and healing. And it gives you the prompts to really feel like you are traveling and eating food and resting and discovering settlements. And as things happen to you, as your reputation grows, it becomes easier to get things. So thematically, all that makes sense. And as I said, it really does succeed in allowing the development of a story as you 
it's sort of in conjunction with the exploration and the fleshing out of your place. So here, as I said, when I was in the North, the North Point, and then I discovered this town called the Grey Guard, I decided it was like a citadel town and it is actually like a garrison, I guess, protecting. And since I had this forest here, that is how I had already had the forest. That's how I decided, well, why would there be something, a gray guard protecting a great forest? Well, for the reasons that I said, and then that helped me create my whole narrative. And then as I continued to explore, I was drawing this coastline and you could see, as we talked about now with this open land prompt with things coming here, the enemy is essentially here. So this lighthouse is becoming an even more important focal point. So I might choose then to travel back there and see what happens based on the prompts in this book. And it is successful as a game, is intended as a journaling game and a drawing game to use your drawing to really enhance your journaling and the creation of the story. So if you are somebody, if you like journaling games, this is essential. If you are into drawing games and, and map making games, obviously it's essential. And I think if you're somebody like me, I'm not the hugest fan of journaling games. I've said this in some other videos on my channel, but the ones that work really do work well for me because it creates a, it's not just a story. I feel like I'm creating a history. And in this case, it's a history of a place that's informing the story of a character. I think if I wanted something more from this, I would have wanted a slightly bigger table on the, I think I would have liked something a little bit more on the exploration table where you get, it is six dice, but for example, if you roll a one, you get nothing. And if you roll a six on the biome, it's sort of the same as the other thing, or you can choose. I, I think this could have been a little bit richer, but aside from that, I feel that the, and of course, one always wants more when one, when one likes something, you know, I would love to see even more items provided. Uh, I think the NPCs are done really well with the prompts, but it would also be great to have even more names and even more descriptors for the people. But overall, for what this is, this is excellent. It was totally enjoyable and I'm going to continue on discovering my world here and really you could then take this and use this whole thing somehow in a totally other rule set in a totally other game that you would play.